Alright, welcome back guys, Ape Skull Gamer back with some more Devil May Cry. Now we're going to purchase the Untouchable, yes. You'll be able to be in a state of Devil Trigger during this period, so you literally, that's all you're doing. You're just, I'm holding on to this as much as I can, because I'm going to use it for the final battle. Yes, that is what I'm going to try to use it for, that's what our goal is. But, like I said in the last video guys, I do like how Dante is still struggling with dealing with his mother being dead. I do like that a lot. As dumb as that may sound, I still do enjoy that. I like how, you know, Trish looks like his mother, and he saves her for the simple fact of that's why, because she looks just like his mother. Holy water, sweet. Alright. I do like how that's designed the way that, that is, is that he's still trying to cope with that problem. Because he was only three when he lost her, I think. So, now we're going to sit here and we're going to... Gotta find out how the heck I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do something. I don't know what this giant heart must must be somewhat controlled with the large living dungeon. The thick veins from the heart is connected to the door above. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. That gets us the information we need. But it doesn't give us how we're supposed to get rid of it. Okay, so we're right here. Smash this stupid vein. Go back to where that was. I like the living cave. I do enjoy this. I like how they kind of try to bring this back in Devil May Cry 3. Um, I'm trying not to spoil what happens in that game. But yes, they do try to bring it back. The whole idea of the cave being alive and stuff and how they do it. Um, I definitely will admit Devil May Cry 3 controls a hell of a lot better than this game does. I get it. It was the third game and this is the first. But, as far as like the jumping goes, even that jumping animation still is better in Devil May Cry, th in Devil May Cry 3 than it was in the first game. Like, I know that they had time to tweak it and stuff and do what they had to do, but come on. This jump mechanic is kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, you know, I know he still kind of jumps like that in Devil May Cry 3, but not as like, stiff, I guess. All oh, these stupid bastards are back. And you have to kill him. Yep, you have to kill him. Bye bye. Stay away from when they explode though, because. You will get hurt, and that's the crap part about that. But you can't stand still because there's things that'll come up out of the ground. Yep, you stand too long and the, the ground will try to eat you. Yeah, that's the annoying part about that, is how that's designed. Between the ground trying to touch you and frickin' the wall trying to grab you and everything else trying to do stuff to you. Oh good, does he actually die? Gotta keep moving though. Okay. Let's go this way. Alright. Yippity. Ah! Reminds me of uh, I mean, Maximo versus the Army of Zen where you had the freaking in the woods there. Yep. Yeah, there's a spot in that that has like a woods thing that like grabs you for no reason. That was a dead end, so that's a no-go. Get out of that. Okay. The heck is this stupid thing? Oh, another one of these pricks. Yep. I knew that was coming. Come on. The living cave is so annoying. And it's only because of these stupid pricks, too. That's honestly the only reason I hated the living caves to a point, was because of these guys. It had nothing to do with how it looked, because it looked really cool. I really just hated it because of the floor trying to kill you. The tentacles that come out of the wall. I mean, they're on the floor, too, but... Like, I, I hate how everything is trying to, like, murder you in this cave. Yeah. That's kind of the annoying part about this. 
Alright, so now where are we? Oh boy! Now we have these dudes. Spectacular. As if I didn't already have enough crap I didn't want to deal with. As if I didn't already have enough crap I didn't want to deal with. Come on, let me do my thing. Let me do my chopping here. I'm not even bothering you guys. I get it, you're supposed to freaking piss me off because of the fact that that's what your boss wants. I understand that. But fuck right off. How about that? I'm surprised I actually got that. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised I actually got that. Ooh! An orb thing! Yeah, that's what I want. Orbs. Red orbs, too. Heck yeah! Sweet! Awesome! I hate trying to deal with all the enemies around when you're trying to sit here and chop like this crap. Yeah, it's not fun. Alright, there it is. Yep. Like I said, the camera still is not my favorite in this game. Definitely won't lie there. The camera is still definitely annoying. Oh, it's still severely annoying. There we go. I never know if I'm actually going to make that jump, if it's going to automatically do it or not. Nope, I'm always afraid of it not doing that and then falling down and having to climb back up that. See, now we like pretty much over pump the door. I like how there's multiple hands in this section. There's like four, five, six. I like how it like over pumps blood into it. I like how that works. Yep, I like how that's supposed to be the final section before you go. That's like the, this is the door that leads to Mundus. So it's pretty neat how they do it. Woohoo! And look at that, we didn't even have to use our untouchable, which is good because I really didn't want to. No, that's not what we want to do. We wanted to save that for Mundus. So we can kick his rancid freaking butt. Alright. Here it is, guys. Mission 22, Legendary Battle. So that'll be in the next video, guys. The next video will probably is going to be the last one. It should be. But until then, guys, this is Ape Scout Gamer signing off. And as always, just keep enjoying your games. Keep leveling up. Keep winning races. Keep winning fighting games. Keep adventuring. Keep enjoying the stories. And just keep gaming.